Channel 4 in the United Kingdom has produced a documentary where it examines Hitler's DNA and finds, among other things, that he really did have only one testicle. You may have seen a video I did a number of years ago where in discussing what happened to Hitler during World War I, the improbability that this was due to a wound, but that the doctor who examined him in Landsberg Amalek prison after he was arrested following the beer hall putsch, noted that he did indeed have only one testicle. The records from Landsberg prison were not examined until 2015 when this was discovered. Therefore, the words of the song Colonel Bogey are in part true. Of course, we still need confirmation on the situation with Goering, Himmler and Goebbels. However, Channel 4 has gone further. It has located his DNA and had it examined. Finding Hitler's DNA was not easy. Hitler's body was burned by his entourage following his suicide and then buried and dug up several times before eventually finding its way to the garden of the Soviet secret police in Magdeburg. Before the KGB handed this over to the Stasi in April 1970, they dug up Hitler's remains together with those of Eva Braun, the Goebbels couple, and possibly those of Generals Bergdorf and Krebs, burned it all again, and then dumped it over the side of a bridge to the east of Magdeburg. In 2021, I went back to this location and filmed it, and I'll leave you a link below to my video so that you can see the final place of where Hitler's remains were dumped. Finding any DNA from them would now be impossible. Channel 4 located some of Hitler's DNA from the fabric of the couch where he shot himself. My own reaction would be to question this this were really the DNA of the Fuhrer, given that there are so many forgeries in circulation. But let's accept the word of those that know more about forensic DNA than I do, and who appear in the Channel 4 production, Hitler's DNA, Blueprint of a Dictator. It needs to be pointed out that the DNA is backed up by saliva from one of Hitler's relatives in Austria, which was collected by Belgian journalist Jean-Paul Mulder and historian Mark Vermeeren. The analysis in the documentary, confirmed by three tests at two different laboratories, showed an exact match, the first time in history that the dictator's DNA has been identified. I want to emphasise that I am only repeating what the Channel 4 documentary says. I am unable to judge the reliability of DNA evidence. However, this evidence suggests that Hitler had a deletion in his DNA, which strongly affects the protein that is implicated in the development of sexual organs. That Hitler did have only one testicle is further backed up by this DNA analysis. The mutation in the gene, known as PROK2, is strongly associated with the Kalman syndrome, which can result in one or both testes not descending normally. Kalman is also associated with lower testosterone levels, reduced sexual desire, and in some cases, a micropenis. Hitler was obsessed with his half-niece Geli Rabaul, which to my mind is verging on paedophilia, although if anything did be take place between them, I need to point out that she was over the age of consent. But only just. In any case, the documentary does go into this in some detail. According to Channel 4, from the DNA, one can also calculate polygenic scores, which assess an individual's genetic markers and compare them with a large population sample to estimate the person's genetic liability to a condition. One such finding shows Hitler's genetic propensity for antisocial behaviour, a measure for psychopathy, to be in the top 10%. Using this marker, the score for autism puts him in the top 1% of the population. Hitler's polygenic score for schizophrenia places him amongst the top 1% also. It is noted that the score only captures a small part of the risk and that he would not be diagnosed today 
because he didn't exhibit serious symptoms. Now, it needs to be pointed out very clearly that there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people with these conditions today and they don't all go on to be raving genocidal maniacs. To get an idea of why Hitler ended up being the way he was, I think it's important to look at Hitler's environment, uh, above all the effects on him of what happened during his time in Vienna, during World War I, and those that influenced him to be the way he was. However, the DNA results are interesting, and I shall watch the Channel 4 documentary with a lot of interest. For the moment, thanks very much for watching. I know it's a very short video compared to what I normally do. I upload now every day at 20 hundred hours my time. I live in Poland and in Germany. My specialization is in the Second World War, the Nazi regime, and above all, the Holocaust. So if you're interested in that type of thing, then you might want to subscribe. I also have channel membership where for around six euros, uh, you can have access to all of the videos I've done. There are currently now more than 800, which are for members only. For the moment, bye for now.